It's a football playoff rematch between two rivals looking to advance to the next round. Welcome to SportsWire. I'm Will Catterly. The first round of the postseason pointed to one game in particular that looked to be the most competitive. Henrico versus Verina. After all, their first matchup came down to a missed extra point and a one-point Warrior win. And just one week ago, the Blue Devils hung with Highland Springs for a half, which is more than any other team could say. Both sides came in with plenty of momentum, but the winner would have to overcome adversity to move on. So here come the Verina Blue Devils back to the scene of the crime where they lost by just one measly point against these Henrico Warriors. The Sledgehammer's gonna easily go into that rain-soaked field. We've had rain like every Friday all football season long, haven't we? Early on, first quarter, the pass is caught and then fumbled. At least that was a rule on the field. James Reed with a recovery for Verina. Blue Devils take advantage early. Ensuing drive, Isaiah. Page turns it upfield into the end zone. Ten yards later, he finds Pater. Touchdown, Blue Devils and Marina. Up 7 to nothing. Henrico wasted no time getting back into it, though. Jihad Carter on the receiving end here. From the pass from Jalen Jones, 19 yards and a touchdown. Henrico ties things up at 7. Looked like we were going to have a barn burner early, but... Henrico's defense really was huge in this game, and they would be even more later. I'll tell you why as we go along in the highlights. Joey Jefferson with the sack. More Joey Jefferson, second quarter. Jefferson with the pick. Six, touchdown. Green and gold, behold. The green and gold. They find the end zone and take a 14-7 lead as Jefferson one-handed gets the interception. It's a big time congratulations on the sidelines. That defense came to play. Verina trying to come back, rolling out and then taken out by that defensive front of Henrico. They would get it going. Really, Henrico had a chance to put this game on ice in the first half. This is one of the big plays. Jalen Jones, nobody doubts his talent. 70 yards down the sideline. Warriors in. Business. More Warriors on the offensive end. Jalen Jones looking for Jahad Carter. Down the seam, he's got him. 26 yard touchdown catch. Two touchdown catches for Jahad Carter in this one. And the Warriors would have a 21 7 lead. Verina late trying to come back. The pass is caught for a first down to Floyd. Jones, Blue Devils, still looking, still looking. I got it, I got it. He threw it to the wrong man, number 15. Lamontre Satterwhite, and even landed as if it was spring track, like a nice vault, 21-7 at the half. Now, second half kickoff, Jalen Jones had an altercation on the field, kicked out of the game, so Henrico has a new quarterback. They got a bigger problem though. The kickoff return, 75 yards later. Isaiah Page makes it 21-13. It's a one score game. Henrika with their backup quarterback and Verina with much needed momentum. Look at that, I mean 11.40 to go in the third quarter. But the defense was just tremendous. That is a sack and a fumble. Warriors pounce on it and regain control. It was all Warriors defense later. Fourth quarter, Henrico. Backup quarterback getting it done. Hayden Vozar connecting with Mark Harvey. And then Harvey gonna take it himself 20 yards out to ice this thing in the fourth. Are you kidding me? Henrico rises up, especially defensively, and that one offensive drive in the second half. And then Jihad Carter, who had two touchdown catches, going to get a pick to put this one on ice. And Henrico not only beats Verina once, they beat him twice, and when it matters most, and they move on in the postseason. 28-13, you're fine. Um, just, you know, stepping in as a leader, all I see is, you know, put a pitch down to being leaders. So I'm very, I'm very proud of that. You know, we just, we had someone on our backs, you know. Everybody always said we ain't going to get over the hump, we ain't going to get over the hump. So we just put it on our backs and, you know, we can do it. I believe in my team.
Meanwhile, Glen Allen football has been setting records all year. At 8-2, and two, the Jaguars have the best record in school history. And going into the playoffs, the Jags had a chance for one more first. Their first ever postseason win. And if Glen Allen was going to get their first ever playoff victory, it would have to be on the road at a very good Atlee team. These two teams seeded four and five, Atlee and Glen Allen respectively. First quarter, Donovan Riddick looking good, connecting with the Butler did it. Chris Butler for a first down will lead to this. Same play, different target. This time it's Donovan Greenhow and how inside the 10. And that would lead to Faraz Muhammad from 30 yards out. Tried and true, up and good, three Nothing Jaguars. Glenn Allen defense came to play too. Looks like they're playing the old school Detroit Lions. At least got the similar looking unis. To get the stop there, let's flip the field to the second quarter. Handoff. Good for a first down. Then Riddick fires, finds Butler on the screen, and Butler to the house. Touchdown. Glenn Allen. With a two score advantage up 10 nothing. Now, following series, Jags are finally held up by that Atlee defense, which have been playing pretty well all year, and then forcing them to punt. But watch what happens here. Fair catch. I got it. I got it. I don't got it. Glenn Allen's got it. And Atlee, the miscue on special teams. Gonna pay dividends for the Jaguars. Riddick calls his own number all the way inside the 20, inside the 15 yard line. And it would lead to this. The defense would stiffen, but Faraz Muhammad on a sloppy night on the field. Gets two field goals in this one. That one from 24 yards out, 13 nothing. Glenn Allen, second half, batted ball. Tyler Johnson gets his hand on it. Atley gonna go for it on fourth. The pass is complete. What a catch. Or was it? Well, in real time, it looked like it, it might have been. But let's go to the Sportswire Super Slow Mo replay. I see a bounce, don't you? Let's take a closer look. There it is. The bounce incomplete. Now, I know it doesn't seem like a big play as we know the result of this one at the end of things, but for the drive and for the game, it meant a lot because it led to this. The touchdown, Tyler Warren to Tucker Bratton, 13-7, brand new ball game. So Glen Allen got to batten down the hatches and head towards that pirate ship for a touchdown. Great return by the Jags. Number 17 in on it, it was Brian Nozim. And then the pass to Chris Butler. They had this connection going all night. Long 64 yards, Donovan Riddick to Chris the Butler did it for the touchdown. Glenn Allen seizes momentum right back up now 20 to seven. At that point, fourth quarter, Warren, the keeper, Atley, two scores, you know, not out of it. But a couple plays later, they fumble the snap and Caleb Vernon all over it. Glenn Allen's got it. And he can take advantage. Riddick finds Drew Morris just as they drew it up to the end zone. Touchdown. Glenn Allen can taste it now. Up 27 to 7 in 8 and 2 regular season. First playoff victory on the way in the Jags. Trying to keep it going, but Atley, not, not going away just yet. Warren to Oliver. And they're going to follow that up with a three-yard run to Pater by Isaiah Abel, and he's more than able to score the touchdown. I mean, at 27-14, but too little, too late. 5.26 to go. Atley going to try an onside kick, but Gavin, be my Valentine with the recovery. And Jags going to take advantage of the short field. Riddick. Calls his own number as he's done a lot this season. 47 yards to Pater. Touchdown, Jaguars. And Glenn Allen gets it done. They make history. First time in school history. Jags win their first ever playoff game. 34-14. They are moving on.
We hit the courts for volleyball and the field for field hockey, where Deep Run looked to continue their tremendous run, while the regional volleyball title match lived up to its billing when the Wildcats and Jaguars faced off. Highlights are straight ahead. Happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Sports Wire. We go to volleyball. Guys, regional championships. It's deep run. It's Glen Allen top two teams all year long. Let's fast forward to the second set. Glen Allen won the first one 25-19. Wildcats looking to battle back and they're always going to get help from Michael Wright and company. These two sides would trade blows all evening long and you'd have long rallies like this and then hit them where they ain't. Nice kill right there for Glenn Allen and then Jags on the serve. Daniel win. But that is a winner for deep run on the kill. 25-20, they even things up at one apiece. First one of three sets wins. Remember, best out of five. Wildcats firing, finding. The kill is Sean McDermott, outside hitter, then later McDermott. What a serve, maybe even better dig, and a great result for the Jags. Parker Bailey, the middle blocker, doing his best, and then somehow, that gets blocked. Wildcats set it right back up and knock it right back down. A great job by McDermott. He gets the kill. Wildcats, once down, one set to none. They get the big point there by McDermott and company. Now they're up two sets to one. Just one set away from victory, 25-22. So we go to the fourth. Now both teams are guaranteed a spot in states, but the winner gets to play at home. Neither team wanting to travel to the beach, right? So, this would be paramount. 6-5 score at this point in the fourth set. Jags, good dig and an electrifying finish. Drew Klein doing what Drew Klein does. The outside hitter is phenomenal. Wildcats come right back in the seesaw affair. Cade Terrell. Terrific setter, but he can also knock him down. Back comes Klein. It's Joe Klein time. We got Drew Klein time. He takes care of business with the kill, man. Watch him on the serve. That is just filthy. 25 21. Jags win the fourth set. So we go to the fifth. First one to 15 wins. Got to win by two. Tied at eight. And guess who? It's Klein time. 9-8, Jags. Later, Bailey on the serve. 12-11 at this point. They get the point there. Make it 13-11, and eventually they get the winner as well. Glenn Allen celebrates as they should, as Klein gonna hoist the hardware. Jags win in five. Uh, well, when I got behind the line, my coach is like, Come on, you got this. Let's end it here. And I, I went for it. I went all out on just that serve and just went for the ace. I, I wasn't you. holding back. Time for some state field hockey. Yeah, Wildcats on three indeed. They're taking on Menchville from the 757 first half action. Game taking place at Hermitage High School. That shot went wide. Menchville, very good. Their captains got into this one. She shoots, she scores! Grace Clugston and the Monarchs have a one nothing lead. Wildcats would strike back though on the corner. They had their chances and dominated field position in the first half. That shot is blocked and saved by the keeper, but Wildcats keep at it and have another corner. And Natalie Balunas is having yourself a year. She shoots, she scores! Goal, and the Wildcats get back on track 
even things up at once. One of the best field hockey matches I've seen all year long. We go to the second half, still a one-score game. Where is the bouncing ball? There it is. Number 12, Callie McGogue's got it. And she's going to give it a go. And she fires and finds it back in the net. Wildcats take the lead. Two to one, deep run with a chance to move on. But 23-11, too much time. Matter of fact, just over a minute later, on the corner, Monarchs score. They respond. This was Morgan Merritt, and that goal has merit because it's got Menchville back in a tie game, two apiece. Wildcats later on, though. Check out what happens here. She shoots, just goes wide. They would put the pressure on. Here it is. The shot hits the defender in the leg. That is ruled a penalty shot. Natalie Balunas with the shot. Natalie Balunas is going to take the penalty and got it. Scores. Goal, Wildcats. And the deep run. Lady Wildcats suddenly back up 3-2. to two. This one still not over in the scoring. Natalie, can she do it? Looking for the hat trick. Got it. Boy, did she come up big when it mattered most. Deep run, a fourth goal on the evening, and they can run out and celebrate because they move on with a victory over Menchville and win in the state quarterfinals. Four to two would be your final. We stick with field hockey as we go up tempo. Deep Run's win over Menchville was only the beginning as the Wildcats made it all the way to the championship game. First, they beat Mountain View two to one in double overtime before falling to undefeated Gloucester, also 2-1 to one in double OT. Still an amazing year for a terrific team. Back to volleyball, where if the regional title match between Glen Allen and Deep Run deserved an encore, well, it has one. As both advance to the state championship match, the Jaguars took care of Maury in straight sets. Drew Klein led the way with nine kills and eight aces. Highlights on the next edition of Sportswire. Deep Run, meanwhile, fell in the first set to Indian River in a rematch of last year's state title game, but went on to take the next three and a three to one victory. To golf now where Godwin's Charlie Kennedy earned all Metro golfer of the year honors by the Richmond Times Dispatch. The sophomore won the regional title this season and fell just one shot short of claiming his second consecutive individual state championship. And it all came up roses for deep run in state cross country, especially for two individuals. Colby Bircham came from behind in the final 200 meters to win the race by one foot over Gloucester's Joshua Shackelford. Lily Snow also came from behind to win the state title, beating Broad Run's Ellie Desmond by three seconds and finishing in 18 minutes and 51 seconds. Well, it's back to football when we come back. Number one, Highland Springs. Well, they looked the part on Friday night. That and more coming up. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. We see them score on the field and the courts. But for many student athletes, the greatest wins are away from the arena. Sometimes it can be hard to stand out from the crowd, particularly in a sport like cross country. It takes a lot of toughness to be successful in cross country and, and track and all that stuff. Yeah, pretty good finish, right? Deep Run senior Emil Bags has no problem with toughness. He's a really good teammate, he's selfless. And he's a really, really gritty guy. So he, he's as tough as he gets out there, really. And Emil doesn't just work hard with his legs. I've been doing competitive programming for most of my time here at Deep Run. Probably faster with my mind, but I mean, my, my leg speed's catching up. Ever since he was a freshman, he was really interested not only in programming, but he also um, really quickly latched on and took an interest in cybersecurity. This summer, I did an internship with network as a network engineer. I'm actually hired by a company or whatever to try to hack their system. And then by doing that, it reveals like 
here's what's wrong. Engel is focused on, I want to do well in programming, I'm really interested in security. Um, he's the president of our Computer Science Honor Society, but he's learned a lot of this on his own. He's put a lot of focus and study and his own personal time to learn and, and become um, an expert in these fields. Whether he's using his legs or using his computer savvy, Abel's future might be in the bag. Kids that have those kinds of skills and are interested and motivated as Emil is, is pretty much going to be able to write his own ticket. And he's even a Boy Scout. Good luck to Emil in all his endeavors. Hey, if you have a nominee that you think deserves a spotlight, we'd sure love to tell their story. Send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us to let us know. Back to the football postseason, Highland Spring Springers. Number one seed taking on the eight seed deep run. Remember, deep run got into the playoffs by beating Goblin last game of regular season. Down seven, nothing already is the Wildcats. And oh, they had him. Oh, did they have him. Number 10, Gabriel Henderson just could not corral it. Highland Springs makes you pay. Don't give them extra opportunities and not take advantage of your own. Kerry King Jr. on the catch from Devontae Waller. And then Waller, yeah, they moved this game to Hermitage too just because brand new field and nice field conditions. The touchdown run, Springers, Talbert from Waller. 44 yards out and then King, the 11 yard run you saw right there makes it 14. Now this is a crazy play. I got it, I got it. I'm just gonna take it away and take it all the way back to the house. Derek Goodwin gives Highland Springs a 21 to nothing lead. Springer's not finished. That's 21 points in the first quarter. Second quarter, gonna take care of business as well. It is number 24, Raekwon Smith from 16 yards out. Touchdown, Springer's easy squeezy lemon peasy for the black and gold. Up 28 nothing at this point. Deep run trying to get things going on the ground. Matthew Johnson not happening. What was happening? A lot of Devontae Waller. Holler, 22 yard pass to Antoine Wells. 155 yards passing, two touchdowns for Waller on the night. 35 nothing at this point. And then how about some more Springer D. Number 26, Tyler Dwocky coming up with it. And then taking it all the way down the sidelines. Look at him go. Number 36, Tyler Jalen with a big time connection. And it would lead to this, the touchdown grab in the back of the end zone. Number 82 getting into the act, Crow Gavin. Gavin Crow, 42 to nothing. Springers easily move on to the next round. Douglas Freeman playing at El Seeper. It's a wet track here. Get your base. We still got to pursue downfield. Get your base and rally to the ball. Words of wisdom, because that's what they would do right off the bat. First possession, rally to the ball. It is a wet field. Fumbleaya. Freeman recovers, and the seventh seeded Freeman Rebels get just the start that they need against the second seed, LC Bird Skyhawks. And you know what this guy can do. Wet field, perfect field, concrete, whatever. Patrick Taylor to the house. Touchdown. Freeman of the Rebels rally with a 7 0 lead. 6.22 to go in the first. And then LC Bird showed why they're LC Bird. On the handoff, in the mud. Trey Mason from Jaden Payu on the handoff. Tie game at 7. 3.54 to go in the first. Skyhawks really got it going defensively and offensively. And running the football is what they do best. Mr. Mason again. Freemason all the way to Paydirt. 14 7, a 40 yard scamper. And Freeman saying, Come on, let's go. Let's get back in this thing. Only down seven. Following quarter, back to punt. That is blocked. And it would set it up for this. Skyhawks go to the air and to their namesake. And it's Payute finding. Mikhail Anderson, 21-7, L.C. Bird. And then more mishandles when it comes to special teams. And you can't give a great team like L.C. Bird all these opportunities off special team mistakes. 
they do just that. Crosses a plane in the end zone before it's a fumble as Jawan Wilkins takes it home to the house. 28-7 at that point. More Skyhawks. They were not finished. Patience in the backfield. Jaden Pay waits for his blockers. He finds the end zone. LC Bird looking really strong down the stretch here going into the playoffs. 35-7 lead at the half. And they would score more in the second. Freeman would get one more on the board, but their season comes to an end. 49-14 the final. So this is what the bracket looks like now. Highland Springs will get Glenn Allen at home. And Rico will travel to LC Bird, the winner will face each other in the regional final. YMCA, everybody do the YMCA. It's Adley, it's Godwin, it's the regional finals in ladies volleyball. Godwin looking good, hadn't lost all year long. And in the opening set up four to three, but Adley, very strong team as well. They get the Point to go as number four, Chasey Tyler, captain, oh my captain, gets a point. Later in the first set, oh, that's a blistering shot. And it goes for Godwin, number 17, Caitlin McNeil. They win 25-21. We move to the second set. So, so far, so good for Mills E. Godwin. Atley, try not to go away. Godwin, again, with another Good looking shot right there. Carmen Wright not doing any wrong. Atley on the serve and then getting that one to go. Number 27, Kara Hammock with a point. Still in the second set. Up by two, 17-15. Atley, what a kill shot that was. And the Lady Raiders take the second set, 25-17. Now both teams guaranteed to go to states. But just as in the guys' regional final, the winner go, stays home. The loser has to travel on the road to the beach. That shot up and in. Atley got momentum going. Kara Hammock was a lot of it. Godwin, though, too good to go away. They get the kill right there. Later, Eagles on the serve. 2019 Atley at this point in the third set. Hit him where they ain't. That is good for the kill. Raiders win the third set, 25-21. We go to the fourth, four to two. Godwin gonna get back into it with some aces. That one is good to go. Later, Godwin up two. Just somehow trying to get it over. Little discombobulated, it works to Atlee's advantage. Oh my goodness. Kara Hammock and Olivier Gritty on that one and then 15-13, Atley. If they win this one, they win the match. But the block right there. Number 25, Aggie Hughes. Middle blocker living up to her name. 24-21, though. Atley gets the upset and wins it. Three sets to two. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at nrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see y'all next time on SportsWire.